Today I'm here to turn pizza into poop and filter red wine into urine. So just over two weeks ago, Bill Nye the Science Guy debated Ken Ham, the creationist of the Creationist Museum. That being said, after the debate was done, some creationists thought they would ask 22 questions that were supposedly going to stump people who believe in evolution like me and you. And today, I'm going to be answering those 22 questions. Bill Nye, are you influencing the minds of children in a positive way? Now, of course, I'm not Bill Nye, and I don't have a stylish bow tie. I actually prefer ties. But I would answer yes to that question. I do believe that Bill Nye the Science Guy is influencing the minds of children in a positive way. Can you show otherwise? Bill Nye the Science Guy is showing children how science works. <laughs> Are you scared of a divine creator? No, not at all. I'm more scared of a Japanese giant hornet that is the size of my thumb, actually bigger than the size of my thumb, can fly a total of 25 miles per hour, and actually exists. Uh, is it completely illogical that the Earth was created mature, i.e. trees created with rings, Adam created as an adult. Yes, it is completely illogical, and since when have we ever observed or seen any sort of data or any sort of thing that can prove that a man can be formed as an adult from the dust of the ground as the Bible portrays, and have a woman formed from a rib? Does not the second law of thermodynamics disprove evolution? See, just by asking this question, this is one of the reasons why I won't dedicate my time to ever actually debating a creationist is because you think that the Earth is this completely closed system. Energy cannot escape or enter the universe. Do you creationists know that the sun is the main source of energy to the Earth? But the answer is no. The second law of thermodynamics does not disprove evolution, and it has no one has ever been able to show that it disproves evolution, and it doesn't even correlate to the theory of evolution. Living things in our universe is not in a closed system. It seems to me by this question that you're using one thing you don't understand to explain another. How do you explain a sunset if there is no God? If the Big Bang Theory is true and taught as science along with evolution, why do the laws of thermodynamics debunk said theories? They don't. Plain and simple. What about noetics? What about noetics? I honestly don't understand, and I don't really understand what you mean by asking this question. What about fucking cheese? I love cheese, by the way. What about pottery? What about all... I don't see how noetics has anything to do with the existence of God. There is, however, a noetics field within the area of the New Age movement, um, and I'm not really familiar with that, but I think it goes something along the lines of your mind can have an effect on matter, but in all honesty, I really don't see how that has any relation to the existence of a God or a divine creator. Where do you derive objective meaning in life? I believe when anybody asks me the question, what is the meaning of life, I really want to just say, it's what you make of it, and that's different for every single person in the world. Um, how do we define life? Um, what is meaningful to life, to us? And I look around us and I see beauty, I see nature, I see the nature, nurture, I see philosophy, science, art, paintings, music. But again, it varies from person to person on what is the meaning of life, what is ob your objective meaning to life. If God did not create everything, how did the first single-cell organism originate by chance? Finally, an intelligent, good question. I don't know. However, although I don't have a specific answer to that question, I would recommend looking up miller urey I think I'm saying that right, I don't know, the miller urey experiment. This experiment proved that amino acids formed in early Earth conditions. So essentially what we have is we have amino acids equals protein, proteins equals living cells, if that makes sense. I, I have a link to the actual the experiment linked down below the Wikipedia page. It goes in a lot more in-depth of the actual, the Miller-Urey, Urey, I hope I'm saying that right, Your Miller-Urey experiment. Why do evolutionists, secular humanists, non-God-believing people reject the idea of being a creator God but embrace the concept of intelligent design from aliens or extraterrestrial sources? We don't, or I should say, they don't. Any decent evolutionary bio biologist supports neither an intelligent design or the concept of panspermia. There is no in-between. The only one found has been Lucy, and there's 
are only a few pieces of the hundreds necessary for an official proof. I'm not sure how many of you creationists are aware of this, but there are billions of years worth of fossil bearing deposits that we have found, many of which are transitional hominid specimens that we have discovered in chronological order, having hundreds of transitional characteristics concluding to anatomical modern humans. And one of the most recent discoveries, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm probably saying this wrong too, is the discovery of the Artiparithesis ramidus in 2009, which actually for the most part, all the people who say, you know, uh, creationists who use the missing link problem, this disproves that. I don't really know how to answer this question because I don't really think that this question deals with the concept of proving or disproving evolution. However, I would say that it doesn't disprove evolution in any way because we can see uh, a, a caterpillar evolving technically into a butterfly. Um, again, I'm not super knowledgeable on the area of metamorphosis, but I don't I don't see how this question is relevant to the is evolution true or false debate. If evolution is a theory like creationism or the Bible, why then is evolution taught as fact? Because evolution is a fact. Evolution simply means change over time. Even the stupid motherfucker known as Ken Ham acknowledges this. So many stupid creationists and Christians seem to think that evolution is a concept that, des that describes the origin of the universe, when in reality that's not the idea, or that's not even what evolution means. Because science by definition is a theory not testable, observable, or nor repeatable, why do you object to creationism or intelligent design being taught in school? Uh, are you stupid? Science is not, I stress not, a theory. Science is verifiable, is testable, is observable. Science is about knowing stuff. But I believe in the separation of church and state, and if you allow creationism to be brought into public schools, you will actually be teaching them religion based upon the Bible, because creationism entails the belief in a god that specifically had created the world in six literal days, and that, my fellow reptiles, is a violation of the First Amendment, the separation of church and state. I will defend that till the day I die. What mechanism has science discovered that evidences and an increase of genetic information seen in any genetic mutation or evolutionary process? Any mutation that increases genome size, like duplication or polyploids. What purpose do you think that we're here for if you don't believe in salvation? Yes, because obviously, because I don't believe in God, because I don't believe in salvation, I do not have any meaning or have any purpose in my life or any value, right? Right. That's what you mean by that question. However, I believe that you and me create our own purpose, our own meaning for what we want and what we look for in life. And I have personally made my purpose here on my YouTube channel and in my life is to be able to help people and inspire people and encourage people to get through their hard times of their life, their struggles that they're going through, and give them encouragement. I like helping people, and right now, that's my purpose. Why have we only found one Lucy when we have found more than one of everything else? We have found and discovered hundreds of bones from thousands of different individuals. I'll mention another one, the Australopithecus afarensis. I think I said that right. Yay for pronunciation! Can you believe in the Big Bang without faith? Yes, of course we can. That is if you decide if instead to rely on evidence. How can you not look at the world and not believe someone created slash thought of it? It's amazing! I do agree that the world is fascinating, incredible, and amazing. There are so much things to learn about in our life, so much more knowledge to find and stick into our brains and learn as we grow up and get older. However, I don't believe in the God of the gaps. I don't believe that I need to throw in God as an explanation because something that I don't have an answer for or I don't know. Too many people do this. Relating to the Big Bang Theory, where did the exploding star come from? I don't know, but what I do know is that there are lots of different theories for this, and also it was not an exploding star, it was an explosion of space and time, hence the Big Bang. But here's the thing you creationists need to understand. It's okay to say, I don't know, when you don't have an answer. It's okay to say that, because we're still finding new knowledge, new things about the world, the origin, the universe, evolution, to this very day, at this very moment, at this very second. If we came from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? <laughs> Simple, because we share a common ancestor. Do you realize how stupid this question is? 
that you're asking right here. That's like asking, if you came from parents, why are there still parents? If I come from my grandma popping me out of her vagina, why are there still grandmas around? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow reptiles. This has been 22 Answers to 22 Questions by Creationists. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Daniel Solzbach, also known as Mr. Repsion. Thank you for watching my content and supporting my content. Peace the rep out. Shoo.